Thanks for checking out this video. Don't forget, like and subscribe. Tony Schiavone brings out his good friend, Britt Baker. Jesus Christ, look at this woman. I know we talked about it when she showed up at, on uh, Sunday, but she is shredded. So the first half of this, she's talking about herself. and uh, Well, I should mention, by the way, as far as like being shredded, because people have been asking, and it was mentioned a little bit in this, in this promo, but like, you know, what's going on with, with Britt Baker? And, you know, she even said, you know, every time people ask, the answer is she's injured, but it's complicated. Well, the thing is, you know, her injuries, when you think of a herniated disc, torn labrum, that sort of thing, like that stuff was a long time ago. Like she had herniated discs when she was working full time. Remember they had that uh, AW reality show? That was like a year and a half ago. Mm. And part of the show was them injecting stuff into her back so she could go out there and work. So, you know, she talks about the mini stroke that she had. That was in November, and it's currently July. And, you know, they, I'm sure, had to do all sorts of stuff to make sure that she was okay. But, I mean, basically, in terms of, like, living a normal life, I mean, she's been, like, good to go for a long time. And so, literally, she just, I guess, has sat at home and trained and watched her diet. And she has come back here, like, absolutely shredded, which, you know, you could argue... You know, you're not much protecting you from bumps and falls, and you got no padding on you whatsoever. So hopefully she ends up okay. But, I mean, she looks fantastic. So she comes out here, and she is nervous. And the first half of this promo, she's telling her true story of where she's been, all the horrible stuff she has fought through. And I felt bad for her, but the fact of the matter is, it was not a very good promo at first. She was unsure of herself and, and talking about how nervous she was even nervous at forbidden door we're, we're worried if people would remember, would remember her but uh herniated discs torn hip labrum mini stroke spent a long long time on the self shelf until she was cleared and ready to come back and everyone welcomed her back she's very grateful to the fans she starts to bury mercedes sarcastically talks about her building this company from the ground up which of course she did not do working so hard to earn her three letters and piping them into her entrance music so the crowd will cheer for her. She's then interrupted by Mercedes arriving outside the building in her fancy ride, looking like a star with both of her belts. The Bucks are waiting for her. They tell her her championship celebration is ready. And geeks at the ring to set up the celebration as Britt is standing there looking disgusted. And they set up balloons. They fill the ring with balloons. <laughs> I didn't laugh at these nerds just setting up a celebration yeah, yeah. around Britt. Yeah. Britt is just standing there looking around while these minions are putting balloons around yeah. her. That was quite awesome. And then Mercedes comes out. And what, once Mercedes showed up in the truck, then this became just a great, great, great segment. But, Vinny, I will say that mm -hmm. I wouldn't say that the first half was a bad promo because it wasn't a promo. Like, she went out there and she just told everybody what happened. I don't think it was... Like, this was... You know, we're going to talk about NXT and some of these uh, promos that they do on NXT. We're like, Sol Ruka's talking about her real life, and it sounds like she's reading a script. Yeah. I mean, that wasn't this at all. I don't know if this... I don't think they scripted anything in this thing for her. No, I agree. She just came out and told everybody what happened, and, you know, it was exactly what it should have been because it was real. Yeah. She couldn't go out there and do a promo and be hyped up and excited about a mini-stroke. I mean, she literally was just being real. And that's that's the reason that everybody was so into her in this segment. And why, I mean, part of it was that, you know, Mercedes met with the Bucks. But, I mean, they turned on Mercedes immediately. Oh, yeah. They hated her. They're chanting DMD, and Mercedes is sneering at them. So, uh, Mercedes wants to talk about Forbidden Door, the pay-per-view she made famous. Britt challenges her for all in, and they proceed to call each other bitches over and over again. I was wrestling it all in when you were a broke bitch with a broken leg in the stands. I'm never broke, bitch. Get to the back of the line. <laughs> and uh, eventually Mercedes accepts the challenge. I did like the line where she says, you know, there's all these women you got to go to the back of the line. And then Britt gets right in her face, and she looks behind her, and she goes, I don't see anybody there. And the crowd popped huge for that. And then Mercedes ends up pie-facing her. Mm. I mean, this this felt like 
a big time main event match. This is a, a main event build for a main event match for a main event show. It all in. Yeah. This is an absolute home run. I'm trying to think of the last women's match that felt bigger than this in this company. I don't even know what it would be. Yeah. Nothing is coming to mind. At all. Even close. Swerve Osprey video package. Again, should have opened the show, but at least it covered all the major bases. So if you missed the, if you missed Forbidden Door, you're not caught, you're now up to speed. Renee then interviews Osprey, who is there with his buddy Kyle Fletcher. And before he can say anything, Don Callis interrupts. But then Osprey interrupts him. I take responsibility responsibility for that loss. It's not on you, it's on me. I'm the one who hit the ref. You gave me Kenny Omega. You gave me Chris Jericho. I owe you everything, but my heart broke on Sunday, and I want out of the Don Callis family. You forget to mention that he claimed that I couldn't bring myself to do the Tiger Driver. And I was so furious when he said that line, because that's not what happened. Mm -hmm. This is total gaslighting here. He was so excited to do that Tiger Driver on Sunday. He hooked the guy, he looked right into the camera, and he goes, Tiger Driver! And he went for it and got countered. And at the time, I could not fucking figure out why they did that spot. Now I'm even more baffled because he claimed he couldn't bring himself to do it. And I was like, that's not what happened. I saw it with my own eyes. But that's now the story. They're, they're now telling the story that I thought was going to be the story. But they did something totally different. But now they're pretending they didn't. At least they're pretending they didn't, I guess. I guess. <laughs> I mean, I don't it's know. a better story if he can't bring himself to do it. Yeah, yeah. So his heart broke on Sunday. He wants out of the Don Callis family. And Don notes he doesn't like to let people go or their signed agreements. But he's proud of Osprey. Happy to do him the favor. Maybe one day, he says, I'll ask you for a favor. I wish you all the best. Come on, Kyle! And Don leaves. Kyle is conflicted, but he does leave with Don Callis. Don's going to fuck this guy. Oh, I, I, when he hugged this guy and he looked in the camera... I was like, what a creep. What a fucking creep. I think you're probably right. I wouldn't trust this callous person. Not me. Chris Jericho comes out for a promo. They show Hook pinning him clean as a sheet with the Judas Effective Forbidden Door. So Jericho's security does not surround the ring. They surround Taz at the desk. And Jericho explains that since he was not booked in the show, he's come out to the guest commentate to get his TV time. Hook, you broke the cardinal sin of the wrestling business. You stole someone else's finish. Mine! And that doesn't work for me, brother. And Taz, you were supposed to be an unbiased announcer. You were clapping and cheering for Hook like a mark. He notes that Taz knows all about gimmick infringement, which is hysterical if you've been following the adventures of Taz on social media this week. But uh, he has talked to the Bucks, and he has had Taz banned, not just from this match, but from the building, effective immediately. And... Taz is pissed, but he goes along, he's taken out, and Jericho takes his spot in commentary. Hook and Shibata and Joe versus Cage of Agony. You know, I don't know if uh, Taz really wants to do anything physical. And if, you, if you've if you watched from the beginning, I mean, you, you can't ignore that he's Hook's dad. And when they do angles, you know, Taz reacts to it as a father would. But you'll notice that Taz never gets involved with anything that Hook does. Like, he clearly wants Hook to just do his thing. But if they don't have fucking him choke out Jericho with the Taz mission at Wembley, I'm going to be real mad. I mean, Hook needs to beat Jericho, win the title. Jericho needs to flip his lid and just start screaming or whatever, and Taz needs to put that hold on him right in the middle of Wembley in front of 45,000 people, they would go nuts. Nuts. I don't know if it's going to happen, but it should. So again, Hook and Shibata and Joe versus Cage of Agony. Jericho's being a total geek on commentary, saying things like, Hey, Samoa and Toa, that rhymes! And then when the baby faces get triple chokes to win, he choked him out and got the win! I did like where, yes, there would be a suplex and you would say, a suplex! <laughs> gotcha. It was, it was negative insight. Yes. <laughs> he added, he, by design, added nothing to the match. So uh, the match itself was like total chaos. Did not you notice, by the way, that not only is he doing this gimmick, but now he's like changed his voice? 
I heard about this before I watched it, and... Is this fucker making fun of me about 15 years ago? I, I, I I'll be pretty pissed off if that's the case. It does seem like a more excited version of Chris Jericho. He's doing a high-pitched Kermit version of himself. <laughs> well, now you put it that way, I'm going to go back and rewatch this. I, I, I didn't think about it till later, and I was like... See it in a new light. This fucker better not hear, be. hear it in a new tone. But that's possible. That's possible. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you. WrestlingObserver.com. You have a... Commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute, as noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. You also get Observer Archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never You'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.